Welcome everyone. Today I will be dealing with a very important topic of plant breeding that is the progeny testing and without which uh, we cannot proceed in the plant breeding program now. Now let's suppose you have selected this plant by seeing its superior characteristics but you cannot be so sure that uh, you have selected the right one only by observing its phenotype. To do work further with this plant or to proceed into the next step of evaluation after the selection principle of plant breeding, you have to know few more things about this plant which you have going to work with. Is the trait you have selected is heritable? And the next one, what is the breeding behavior of the selected plant? That means if it is a homozygous plant or it is a heterozygous plant. Now, this bunch of information, important information you can get by performing its progeny test. That means it is one kind of selection procedure by observing its progeny characteristics not only depending upon its phenotype. You are observing its progeny to select this plant and you deciding whether to select or not to select this plant by observing its progeny characteristics. As you can see here, what is progeny testing then? It is the estimation of the worth of plants, the real value of a plant which you are going to select on the basis of the performance of their progenies is known as the progeny testing. And here the performance of the progeny is showing the marker character for, for the selection of any plants. Next, who first came with the idea of this progeny testing is the Louis de Belmore in the year of 1856. You must have you must have known about the experiment of great experiment of Mendel, uh, who have used about 32 varieties, and from then uh, selected only 22 pure homozygous varieties uh, in his two years of experiment. And the procedure which he applied in selecting those pure varieties was the simply the progeny testing and uh, but he did not mention it in his paper and the, but and the idea of progeny selection uh, become popular only after this Villimori and that therefore it is also known as the Villimori line selection principle and in short Villimori principle. Villimori proposed individual plant selection based on this progeny testing and by applying this method that is the individual plant selection based on progeny testing, he successfully improved sugar content in sugar beets uh, in his 12 years of experiment. But he also ex applied this approach in improvement of four wheat varieties. But he was, but this uh, experiment or selection was ineffective because of it, of it, this wheat's polygenic nature. Today, this progeny test is the basic step in every breeding method. Now, let's see how progeny testing is helping us in knowing the worth of a plant. Suppose you have made selection for tallness of the plant and you have selected this tall plant. Now, you have grown its progeny and you observe that all its progeny is also showing the tallness. Now, you can say from here that this tallness is being inherited or herited from this generation to the next generation. Now, what can you see here? The, this phenotypic superiority of the selected plants uh, is mainly due to the genotype, which is heritable. Okay. Now, if you see its progeny is being dwarfed, that means this tallness is not going to be inherited, then your selection was wrong. And that plant which you have selected was due to environmental cause. Suppose you have given uh, more nutrients to them and the plant gone go tall. Now this way by observing its progeny whether this is being inherited or not you can conclude the heritability of the trait which you have selected. Next another important thing you can know from the progeny testings is the breeding behavior of a plant, whether it is homozygous or heterozygous. Suppose you have selected this tall plant. This tallness may be due to capital T, capital T or capital T, small t. You don't know because you cannot see the genotype. 
which you can know through progeny testing. If you ask me how, it is very simple. You just allow your selected plant to self-pollinate and grow its progeny. If you see all the plants are same as your selected plant, that means if you have made selection for tallness, if all the plants of your progeny is showing that, that tallness, then it is the genotype of the plant is homozygous. And if you see its progeny is showing some plants which are dwarf in nature, then your selected plant genotype was heterozygous. That means capital T, small t. That's the way you can know that how progeny testing can help us the understanding the breeding behavior of a plant, whether it is homozygous or heterozygous. This you can uh, do with go with checker board, you can understand easily how this three tall and one door plant is forming. Now let's take an example and understand what actually uh, Vilmorin did in his experiment. He selected some superior sugar beet plants with high sugar content. Then he had grown uh, their progenies and observed uh, considerable amount of sugar content difference. And to explain this, he grouped his selected superior sugar beet plants uh, into three groups. In the first group of plants, uh, he observed their progenies were all were with high sugar content. In the second group, he observed that some of the progenies were forming high sugar content and some are with low sugar content. But in the third group, he observed all the progenies are with low sugar content. Now, as you see, in these first two groups, uh, some of the progenies were high sugar content or with high sugar content. That means here and here, the high sugar content trait is being inherited. That means in this, in these two groups, uh, group of plants, there was the genotype for the high sugar content. But in case of third group of plants, there was no genotype because it was due to environmental. That's why it was not heritated. And in the first group, as all the plants, all the progeny are showing high sugar content, this you can say due to the homozygous gene were present in this group of plants. But in case of second group of plants, some plants are showing high sugar content and some are low. And that's why you can say they are heterozygous in breeding behavior. And this way, the Vilimorin uh, successfully improved the sugar content of sugar beet in his 12 years of selection. Thus, what we have seen so far that plants with similar phenotype like high sugar content is producing considerably different progenies. And from these observations, Hilmorin concluded that the real value of a plant can only be known by studying its progeny. Now, let's summary of things what we have learned. The progeny testing. Progeny testing means the estimation of the worth of a plant by observing the performance of its progeny. It is one kind of selection method uh, or a method of selecting plants by observing its progeny characteristics. Uh, progeny test was developed by Louis de Vilmorin and that is why it is known as Vilmorin isolation principle or in short Vilmorin principle. Vilmorin used individual plant selection based on progeny testing and successfully improved sugar content in sugar beet that is beta vulgaris uh, in 12 years of his selection method or experiment. What is the real use of this progeny testing? Is we can know the real value of a plant in terms of heritability. That means the trait for which we are making selection is it heritable or not. Then the breeding behavior of the plant we can know that means is it heterozygous or homozygous in nature? This is all about progeny testing. Thanks for watching and please subscribe my channel.